Good evening, book lovers. Welcome to another episode of Cat Lit Live. I am your host, Amy Catapan. Welcome to another episode where we are going to talk with a new author, somebody I have not had as a guest. If you're new to Cat Lit Live, what I do is I bring you interviews with Catholic authors who have new books that are releasing or just released. And uh, today is no exception. We are going to be talking with Jamie Stewart Wolf about her new book, Born to Do This, 30 Days with St. Joan of Arc. Um, if you're not familiar with Jamie, well, first of all, the most important thing to know is she edited one of my books. Um, she edited uh, Sweet Jesus, Is It June Yet? You can see it up there on my shelf. Um, my first book for teachers. Um, and um, now she has this book, Born to Do This, 30 Days with Joan of Arc. So let me tell you a bit more about Jamie before I bring her on. Jamie Stewart Wolf is a freelance writer and editor at One More Basket, a bi weekly columnist at the bostonpilot.com, and a bi monthly columnist at OSV News. She has written numerous books for both adults and children. Wolf serves on the board of the Joan of Arc Project, which promotes St. Joan of Arc year round and organizes an annual street parade on January 6th, which retells St. Joan of Arc's life with pageantry that draws tens of thousands. Wolf holds a Bachelor of Arts in Government from Harvard University and a Master of Arts in Ministry from St. John's Seminary in Boston. She and her husband, Andrew, live in New Orleans, Louisiana. So please help me welcome Jamie Stewart Wolf. Hi, Jamie. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you for coming on Catholic Lock with me. Oh, absolutely. So I've just read your bio. I explained that you were my editor for Sweet Jesus. Is it June yet as well? I added a little to your bio. Yeah, it's role reversal here. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> a little bit. Um, and that we're here to talk about Born to Do This, 30 Days with Joan of Arc. So give us the elevator pitch about this book. And I think you've got a copy to hold up too, because unfortunately I don't have my hands on a copy yet. There, there it is. we go. All right, tell us about it. There it is. So Joan of Arc's name is familiar to Catholics and non-Catholics alike, right? Um, She's kind of a very intriguing personality in history, but her amazing story, her mysticism, her mission and her martyrdom are largely unknown, including by Catholics, even those who really love her. Um, Joan, the real Joan is who we meet in, in this book. And we meet her through courtroom testimony that was preserved for 600 years both testimony that she gave and testimony given by those who knew her. So in bite-sized pieces, we're exposed to kind of the trajectory of her life, the witness of her faith, what happened to this 19-year-old martyr, you know, young girl, uh, illiterate peasant, um, and we're introduced to uh, what that could mean for us. So it's in an age of anxiety, especially courage like Jones seems unreachable. But if we kind of enter the school of Joan and we learn from her, we can gain a little bit of courage too. That's what this book is really about, but it's bite-sized pieces over a 30 day period. I like this idea. We get to spend time getting to know her over 30 days. Why, why do you think she is so popular? Because I actually do a research project with my students and we look at uh, people who were some type of leader and she's on the list. And, you know, yeah. this is at a public school. And so I have kids who are researching her because they're fascinated by her and they might not even be Christian, these kids. Right. Why is she so popular that children want to read about her who don't even know her as a saint? Well, she's kind of definitively heroic, right? But she's also kind of an inkblot. When you look at Joan of Arc, we tend to see in her what we want to see there. So if we want to see women's empowerment, we can see that. Mm -hmm. If we want to see uh, a person, you know, a kind of a peasant, medieval peasant of her time and culture, we can see that. If we want to see somebody who may have suffered from some kind of mental illness uh, and hearing voices, we can see that. Uh, but that's why I think a book like this is is a, a great service because it kind of unpacks some of those myths and gets down to the to the uh, reality of who Joan actually was. And we see that because she is actually the most well-documented woman of the Middle Ages. Oh, wow. Fascinating. And it's really because of these the court records, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. 
So you can read all of her testimony over a five month period, um, you know, long trial and tons of questions. And you can read those answers even today. Wow. I didn't realize her trial went on for five months. See, I've, I've seen so many research projects on her and, he, and still I'm going to learn something here. I didn't realize the trial went on for so long. All right. So here we are. We're 600 years later. Why are people still looking at her and seeing somebody who's relevant? Like, what if somebody doesn't know much about her? Like, should we still see her as relevant? Absolutely. I mean, she's a person who kind of went against all odds, right? And who God called out of her situation and into mission. And so there's, as Catholics, right, we can look at this book, at this book, but also this, this person as a model of missionary discipleship. Now, her mission's a little different from most of ours because it involved leading an army, right? It's not Again, for me. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, it may not be, that may not be, uh, although some days we may feel like we're leading yes. an army against, uh, you know, against all odds in a kind of desperate battle. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, uh, I think that's a lot of it. The other thing is that um, her heroic deeds are well documented in history, but her virtues are just amazing when you see how she behaved in situations um it's really jaw-dropping it's very jaw-dropping and when you say 600 years that's exactly right because now right now right now this last summer uh was the 600th anniversary of joan first hearing the voices wow. um, to her and led her into mission but um there's uh it's, it's just kind of an amazing thing and of course those were the saints so Joan also has something to teach us about what it means to have the saints be a part of your life. I mean, we, I love having Joan being a part of my life, but she's a great model for the, for the communion of saints active in our faith journeys, because she really, her whole life was lived in the context of the cloud of witnesses. So what are some interesting things we might learn about Joan when we're reading through your book? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is Joan was in kind of a mystical formation process. So we think of it, you know, she's in the garden one day or she's walking through the woods or whatever, and she hears a voice and it says, go into France and, you know, lead an army and defeat the English who have been beating you very severely for the past 75 years. That didn't happen. What actually happened is that the voices came to her at 12 years old, and over a period of five years, they formed her. She learned to trust them. She learned to know them. She learned to recognize them. She learned that they could be trusted. And they said simple things at first, nothing to do with taking up a sword or a horse. They talked to her about living a sacramental life. They talked to her about behaving. They talked to her about going to church often. That's what they gave her, the ordinary means of salvation. But she took full advantage of that. And she followed exactly what they said. She was obedient to the will of God. Um, it cost her everything. But it also was uh, really the core of who she is, who she was and who she Ill is as a person. Um, another thing is she had a she kind of had a mystical sword. Um it was a physical sword, but it was found in a kind of prophetic way. She was re It was revealed to her that in a certain church, there would be a sword behind the altar waiting for her. Now, this sounds ridiculous, but it actually- yeah, I thought at first, you're going to tell me she has to pull it out of a stone or something. It's, it's kind of like, her almost, right? It's really, it's really sort of like that, right? So what she does is she sends someone, she doesn't go herself, she sends someone, she says, tell them that there's a sword behind the altar that I'm supposed to have. Well, right behind the altar, there's a sword. It's very rusty. They wipe it off. The, the rust comes off with no problem. They bring it back to Joan. The sword- we're not sure really who this, whose the sword was, but the legend is that it belonged to Charles Martel, who seven years before, 700 years before Joan had defeated the uh, Muslims as they invaded France at Tours. Wow. But it was very common to leave weapons as an offering in churches. Um, you know, if you were successful, you know, your, your life was preserved, you, you experienced a military victory, you would leave something of your armor or sword or something like that in church. 
So that wasn't as, as ridiculous as it sounds, finding a sword in the back. I mean, I don't think we'd find many in our sacristies. Right, uh, right. Well, St. Ignatius surrendered his sword when he decided to become a soldier for Christ. He left yeah. his sword at an altar. There you go. But despite having a sword like this, and she had a couple of other weapons as well, she never killed anyone. In fact, she had a banner made with the names of Jesus and Mary on them. And it was, uh, there was an image of two angels and the Lord in the center kind of holding the world, reigning over everything as king. And so what happened was she was asked again and again, you know, what about this sword? What about this sword? And she said, I prefer my, my banner 40 times more than my sword. And she, she carried the banner into battle, not from the back, but from the front. She led from the front. She carried it into dangerous positions. She had a sword to defend herself, but she actually never used it to kill anyone. She was uh, very much a soldier um, in the spirit of the Crusades, in the best spirit of the Crusades. Mm -hmm. You know, a military mission was what God had given her. So it's really kind of interesting. She was a great military leader um, and actually was particularly, evidently, particularly talented at placing artillery. Oh, now, how does wow. a, okay. That's a new fact I did not know either. <laughs> like, how does a 17-year-old right? How does a 17 year old know how to ride a horse, wield a, a lance and a sword and, and, you know, all of this and lead armies into battle and make strategic and tactical decisions? Infused knowledge? Yeah. Prudence? Oh. She was directed mystically. Her entire life was based on her prayer life. Everything she did came from those voices everything she did she didn't she rarely did something that was um what they didn't tell her and when she did they corrected her promptly wow so it's it's pretty interesting um yeah and then too she was illiterate she could not read or write at the beginning of her military career she could just sign her name with an x by the end of the year or a little bit more that she led the troops and that's all it was just a little over a year and she turned the tide of a, of a war that, that had been going on for 75 years. Um, she uh, was able to sign her name. There are three existing documents in which we have her signature. And you can see that it gets better as she gets yeah. better. So her handwriting, right? Improved. <laughs> Not the Palmer method, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. handwriting gets better as she gets uh, more confident in writing her name. Wow. Okay. Well, I could probably listen to you talk about Joan of Arc for a long time, but we got to leave something for people to go and read in the book. Yes. <laughs> so why don't, before we close up here, why don't you tell people where they can find out more about the book and about you and all that you do? Or you can go to Ave Maria Press and order it there, or you can get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or any bookstore will order it. Um, it looks like this, a lovely, lovely cover image of Joan, uh, done by a Ukrainian artist, which I'm very pleased with, you know, very oh. happy. With that. Um, but anyway, and, uh, you can follow me on Facebook, find me on Facebook, find me online, um, on Twitter and Facebook. I hate to say I don't use much Instagram, but, uh, <laughs> you know, if you, if you ping me there, I'll find it and, you yeah. know, something like that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, eventually. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, I usually post uh, things that I write for, you know, for various columns and whatever else on my Facebook page. And, you know, I'm happy to have you read or comment or whatever you like. And people can find you at onemorebasket.com, right? I want to make sure we get yes, that. There yeah, too. onemorebasket.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Jamie. I really appreciate it. And I learned so much today about Joan of Arc, even though I've heard countless research projects on her. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you have. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. We're going to wave goodbye to Jamie. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, well, I don't know about you, but I'm even more interested in reading the book. It's actually part of a series. I have some of the rest of the series from Ave Maria Press here. Um, I do not have the Joan of Arc one yet, but now I really want to get it because I'm like, well, there's, there's a lot more about Joan of Arc than I thought there was. So um, if you are a fan of Joan of Arc. If you already have your hands on a copy because it came out about a month ago, um, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are watching this somewhere else, 
head over to my YouTube channel and go ahead and subscribe because that is where you will always find the newest episodes of Catholic Live. It makes its way out to catholicmom.com and to my Instagram and all that later on, but you will find the newest episodes on my YouTube channel. Just look up AJ Catapan. So until next time, I'm just going to wish everybody some happy reading.